a lot of people are contemplating suicide right now. Okay, I've heard a couple of you talk, say it. Um, another person, it's everywhere. You've probably seen it on the tube yourself, people saying that they can't deal with what's going on. And they're contemplating, they can't deal with the fear of, the, of living in these days. Please listen to me. Okay, let me explain something to you. When I committed suicide 16 years ago, okay, I swallowed a whole bottle, a whole bottle of Percocet and a half a bottle of Xanax, okay? With the intentions to die, I wanted death. I wanted to be numb, blanked out, no more existence of this world. I wanted nothing to do with nothing anymore. The only problem with that is, I don't know if I died or if I didn't die. I don't know. All I know is when I hit the bed, I was in another place. I was in the desert. <laughs> and, and I knew exactly why I was standing right there. I knew what I just done. I knew that I was, there was Jesus right there. You know, I knew what was going on. Okay, I knew what, why I was standing there. I knew I had just took my life. I knew that. Okay, and I told you as I was walking, I saw Jesus Christ, you know, sitting right there, sitting, I told you, there was a manger, it was a desert, there was nothing there, desert, just desert. Who was cold out here, y'all? There was desert, and I saw a manger scene, that's the only way I can explain it, that's what it looked like to me, a big manger scene. And I was with my mother, and I didn't know why, because my mama was alive, okay? So anyway, I remember thinking when I was there, I was like, why is she here? That's so weird. And I was like, wow. I was standing there looking kind of dumbfounded. Why is she here? And then I turned and she said, there's Jesus. And I turned and looked where Jesus was right there sitting on a stump teaching a bunch of men. He was, he was kind of young, but he was teaching a bunch of men. Teaching. And I go on up. Me and her walk up to the picket fence that's in front of the manger. Take a left. Walk up, go up to the end. Say, for instance, this white is the end. To the end of the fence, stop. I felt a prayer. I turn around, look, there's Jesus, full grown man right there, standing on the other side of that fence. I back up. I stand face to face with Jesus Christ. Right there he is in my face, looking up a little bit. He's taller than me, a little bit taller. Beautiful blue eyes like you've never seen. Blue eyes is what I saw. Okay, and they were crystal clear, like you could look through them. Okay, like I did look through them. I could see he showed me something through his eyes, and like he was looking through mine. I gotta go over here, it's cold, y'all. I could see the pain. He let me feel the pain that he feels when his own people, us, reject him. Don't try to get close enough to him, don't obey him. I felt it, y'all, the pain. He, he let me feel some of my own pain, my guilt. Because when I first saw him and looked up, I said, oh, man, there he is. I turned my head. I said, I look this way. I said, I'm going to hell now, which was that way. I said, I'm going to hell now. There he is. This is it this time, buddy. And um, yeah, I looked back up. And that's when I locked eyes with him. And the guilt left me. My own guilt left me. I felt it fade away from me. And I just got caught up in his eyes. Okay? And he let me experience some of what he feels from us. Okay? And, and, and it was very, very, very painful, y'all. And every time I think about it, I get choked. Because you don't understand. Hold on. You don't understand the gravity of what we do to him. You don't understand how intense it is. And you don't, I, I almost, I almost, I've always said this, I almost wish every single one of us could experience that. I wish every single one of us could experience that. But whatever the reason is, he won't let that happen, you know? I don't know, man, but I wish that it could. You know, I wish that you could. Because then, I guess if that happened, I don't know, man. But either way, he told me when I was at the fence, he said, what, stop, one more step. You're gonna be in out of darkness for eternity. That's what he told me. 
you know, and I knew. I remember stand, stopping and looking straight ahead, and I was like, I, don't, I knew that's hell. I'm on my way to hell. One more step, I'm going to hell. Out of darkness is hell. For eternity, he said, you're not coming back out. Don't put your right foot forward and put it down on the ground. Because if you put your foot down on the ground, I was putting my right foot forward, you're not coming back. You understand? So I stopped. So <clears throat> I wouldn't be here. I'm telling you. Oh, it's, and it's more intensified, okay? But my point is, is I had problems here on this earth that I couldn't deal with, didn't want to deal with, didn't want to think about it. But my, what I'm telling you, if you're contemplating suicide, don't even go that road, forget about it. Because you're doing it because you're scared or you're hurt or you're full of pain and you want it to end. Well, let me just get a little news for you. When you do step out of your body into the other side, you still got pain. You still know everything going on. You still got the feelings of you had when you left here. You know everything. You know why you're there. You, you still got all that with you. The only thing you left behind was your skin. That's it. Now you got to take all that pain that you still have on the other side. You still, when you step out, when you kill yourself, when you step out of your body, okay, into the other side, you know why you're there. You still remember everything that happened to you. All the pain, all the hurt is still there with you. You've got your mind, okay? You got your feelings, okay? And so you take all that that you just tried to kill yourself for, now take that with you into eternity, okay? Now you got to take deal with all that, plus knowing that you're getting ready to go into hell. On top of it, so it doesn't fix anything. It doesn't take, when you kill yourself, it doesn't fix a thing. It doesn't take your problems away. It doesn't make anything any better. It doesn't make anything stop. You understand? So what I'm telling you from somebody who did it, scratch that off your plate. And not everybody that kills theirself gets a chance like I got. I don't know why. God didn't tell me why some do, some don't. I don't know why. All I know is I did, okay? And he showed me why. It took 15, uh, 16 years to show me why my mama was there and why I saw him teaching. I remember when that happened. I was like, I knew I just killed myself. I was like, why is my mother here? She was alive. I'm like, what's she doing here? <laughs> and then I looked over there and said, what is he teaching people for? What's, I just remember saying, what has this got to do with me just killing myself? does this got to do with anything? Then I go on up into walking up to the fence, taking a left, going to the end of the white picket fence. And there's Jesus as a man telling me to stop. One more step, you'll be in outer darkness. There he is. I turn and look. Now I knew exactly what was going on here. And I'm like, okay, yeah, this relates better to what I just did right here. But what does that first scene over there mean? Well, I went 16 years not understanding what the first scene meant. I understood what the second scene meant, <laughs> but now I know because I never understood for 16 years. Why did Jesus let me see my mama there? She didn't kill herself. She was alive. And what did me seeing him teach have to do with anything that I just did? Never understood it, y'all. That's why I told you, you won't get revelation from God sometimes about things that he show you. He'll show you stuff in a dream, a vision, whatever. And you won't get revelation until you are 100% seeking him with everything you got. Then you'll get revelation. Okay? Took me 16 years to get revelation. Why my mama was in my suicide. Um, why was she there after I had just committed suicide? And what's that got to do with Jesus teaching? The second part, I know I understand exactly what happened. But what the first part never made sense to me. Okay? Well, that's where I understand now. Jesus said, I'm telling you, because I was very close to my mother, y'all. Very close to my mom. I'm her baby. Baby of four, I'm her baby. Okay? He took her to heaven in April. April is when I really got down on my knees. You know, I've been in and out with God my whole life. In and out. In and out. You know, I, I didn't do bad things in the world and stuff. Just, you know, I would cuss a lot. You know, I had, oh, man, y'all. I was just in and out with God. Not serious. I wasn't serious. 
half and half, okay? Like most people are, half and half. But when he took my mama home, okay, I had a choice to make. Because I was devastating to me. I couldn't, I'm the one that couldn't handle that. Devastating. So I said, Kim, you got a decision to make. You're going to kill yourself. You already know what's going on the other side with that. But can you live with this? Or just dive back into drugs and alcohol? Because that kind of uh, hides the pain a little bit. Okay, or, and ruin the rest of your life. Or, honey, you got to get into Jesus with everything you got. I chose that road. Get into him with everything you got. And when I stepped into that world, I understand now why I, why she was there. Because it was during this time, Jesus said, I'm going to raise you up to be a great teacher. Which is why I saw him teaching in my, um, in my suicide, whatever. That's why I saw him teaching. I didn't never understand why did I see, why did I just kill myself? And first thing I see is my mother who's alive and Jesus teaching people. I'm like, what does that have to do with me killing myself? What does it got to do with anything? Now I know, and this is what it is. So he's using this time that he took my mother to heaven to raise me up to a great teacher. And that's exactly what he's doing y'all. That's what he's doing. And then the rest of it went on. There he was forgiving me for my sins. I, he could stop me from going into hell. There he was forgiving me for my sins and telling me what I need to do. And then I wake up throwing up. I'm going to pop up on my bed throwing up everywhere. Puking my guts up, y'all. And telling my husband as I'm throwing up, I just saw Jesus. I just saw Jesus throwing up everywhere. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I'm telling you, my point to this is, there's more to it. I'm just not, this is all I'm going to tell you, but right, what I'm telling you is some of you that can't take what's going on in life, can't uh, have a lot of fear about what's happening, what's coming, suicide ain't the answer. It's not going to help you because you take all that fear and, and uh, pain with you. You understand? I want you to understand that. The only thing you leave behind is your skin. That's it. And then when you when you kill yourself, the fear on the other side duplicates. Duplicates. And sometimes it's forever. Forever. So suicide is not your way out. It's not your way out at all. It all goes with you. You leave nothing. I mean, yeah, you leave nothing behind. You take it with you. As soon as you step on the other side, you know exactly what's going on. You know exactly. You know everything. Okay? It's the ones that get to go into heaven. And if you commit suicide, I'm sorry. You're not going into heaven. No. Jesus said, thou shalt not kill. Okay? When you kill yourself, it's a sin. It's a sin, y'all. Yes, it is. And I experienced it. I was going right into hell. I was one step away from going into hell. So, and even if he says... You know, people say, well, what about people who have mental problems or, you know, a lot of emotional is issues and, blah, blah, and they do it. You know, you know, all I can tell you, Jesus said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy on. That's all I can tell you. I don't know what he'll do with you. OK, I don't know. Maybe he'll do what he did with me, you know, but I know I was going to hell. I was on my way to hell. And I know some people have committed suicide and he did not stop them and bring them back. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. All I know is what he did with me. Okay. And I'm here. And I know why I'm here. And I know, I tell you what, Jesus told me, give your life to me. Go live for me. He said, explain to the people that they need to live for me. They need to be more than just talkers. They need to be doers. He said, they, it's time to get down to the nitty gritty and get serious. Push the people. He said, Kim, you're a pusher. You're a pusher. You're strong. Make them strong. That's why I'm here. Okay? And that's what I'm going to do. I am a pusher. You know, but I'm telling you another thing. I'm driving the demons out there on the internet world wild. Driving them wild. You know, there's somebody else I know that's having demonic attacks in her home. In her home, you all. Now, I'm going to tell you, she said, can you come over here and pray for my house? I said, yeah. I got no fear of demons from hell. I used to. I used to, y'all. 
way back before I tried to kill myself, I had fear like you wouldn't believe because I felt them. I felt them. Anyway, there's a long story to that. Years, years, years before that, I was in dabbling witchcraft long, long time ago. So I had a lot of fear when I left out of that, a lot of fear. But now, who I am in Jesus Christ, another reason you hear the ur urgency in my voice is because they make me sick. Y'all, they make me sick. And I know what they're doing to everybody. I know what they're doing to you guys, okay? I know. And I know what kind of power you have over them that a lot of people don't use. Well, I'm telling you, use it, use it. So anyway, she's like, can you come over and pray for my house? She's like, I literally see these demonic spirits. I see them. She's not crazy. She's going through stuff that a lot of people's going, it's real right now, y'all. I told you Satan and his angels have been cast to the earth. Jesus told me that war happened just a couple months ago. So there's real stuff, real attacks happening. You're gonna see more too, okay? So anyway, I go in there and she's got like these mini blinds. They're mini blinds. There's no air vent around it. No wind, no nothing. One blind that's about four blinds in will swing by itself. No, no other ones are moving on. Just one blind will swing. Okay. She hears creaking walking around her apartment when she's there. Creaking. She should turn all the lights off, go to bed. Every single light off and go to bed. She it was loud, loud creaking on the floor that woke her up. She shot up. The lights were on in the hallway. She didn't turn them on. I mean, there's, she's having physical attack. They're not physically touching her body. Well, one time they did. They pulled her shirt and snapped it back on her. Anyway, she's having attacks. So I said, okay, I see what's going on here. So I grabbed my Bible, my anointing oil, and myself with the Spirit of God who's in me. The Holy Spirit is in me, and I take me and my authority over there. And I am boldly, boldly, see, I'm getting loud, y'all. I'm boldly walking in there. I'm like, put, get out of my way, go in the door. I said, demons from the pits of hell, you forces of evil, bring yourself to attention right now in the name of Jesus, bring yourself to attention. I go in forcefully and I, and I command them by the blood of Jesus, the conquering blood of Jesus, the victorious blood of Jesus to get out in the name of Jesus. And I'm anointing everything she's got in there, y'all. And I'm just boldly exercising them out with the authority that I've got in me in the name of Jesus. And she was like, they're leaving. She said, I could see them going out the door. They're running, they're running. That's right. That's the power you have to make them run. You make them run, but they'll come on my channel because there's power on my channel here. I've got power of God in me, you guys. And it makes them, they hate me. They stay, they can't stand me, you know? And that's, that's, that's the way I want it because I don't like them either, okay? And I run them off. I run them off and I stand up against them, demons, face to face. Come on, bring it on. Bring it on because you won't win. You won't win. And that's what God wants each one of you to do. And you can do it. That's my thing. You can do it. You just got to be raised up and let the power of God build up in you. And be. you need to be taught the Bible the right way, which is what I'm doing you. You need to be taught God's word. But the thing is, I'm not really teaching you the Bible. What I'm teaching you is how to study God's word the way God showed me to tell you to study it. And then he said, I, I, their Lord, God will teach them. He said, I will bring them revelation of my word. That's what he, that's what he's doing here. Okay. So I'm trying to tell you all in a short way, uh, maybe a long way, <laughs> that you're gonna come up upon demonic attacks if you haven't already. And you who have a lot of fear and wanna slide out of here through suicide, that's not your answer. That's not your answer. You carry all that fear and problems with you on the other side, it's still there. You know exactly what happened and like you got your memory now, you gotta remember all of it, okay? All of it. Now you got the crap coming up on you from the pits of hell, you don't want that. The only one, y'all, who's going to break you free from your problems and your misery and your torment is Jesus. That's it. That's it. So you take, instead of thinking about killing yourself, no, stop that. Turn that around. Take it up to Jesus. Go outside. Put your coat on. Take a long, serious walk with God. If you feel like you're crazy talking to yourself, who cares?
Who cares? God is there. He hears you. He hears you. Sit down and talk to him constantly, constantly like he's right there in the room because he is. Open the Bible, study it like I'm showing you. Do it all the time. Do it. I mean, I'm serious, y'all. I don't watch TV ever. I'm in the Word. Every waking hour, I'm in the Word. In the Word. And then making my videos. In the Word. Talking on the phone to some people. On the internet to some people. Some of y'all. Okay, I'm, I'm out there witnessing to the shelters. I'm doing things, y'all. Everything I do is for God. Everything I do, every waking hour is for God. I don't go to putt-putt or movies. I don't do no silly stuff. I'm always in the Word. Because right now... Right now is how urgent it is. It's urgent. And there's people out there, like you see on the internet now, talking about killing themselves, that need to hear me. They need to hear me, okay? And I'm telling you, those problems you think you're going to cut off of this earth, they go with you. They go with you. And you're like, wait a minute, why? Okay, I just, I just took my life. Why do I still remember all the pain and all the guilt and all the shame? Why do I still? Because it goes with you. So killing yourself don't fix nothing, but just uh, it, it, it heads you towards going to hell is what it does. So don't give in to Satan and his demons. Don't give in to them. Take it to God. Get close to God. And I tell y'all in every video how to do it. I got to go inside. I'm freezing, y'all. So just forget the suicide thing. Scratch that out. In the name of Jesus.